stepping inside the bedroom, Jim sighed in disappointment when he found you sleeping. What hurted him more was that you were sleeping at the far edge of the bed, facing away from him. Hurt, disappointment, loneliness, these things were something he discovered lately. In fact, the concept of feelings were new for him, something he never experienced in almost three de- decades of his life. And the person who fostered these feelings was none other other than his officially wedded wife, aka you, the silent and distant conduct towards him left him both disheartened and perhaps despondent. Letting out a huge sigh, he turns towards the bathroom to take a shower. A warm shower was what his exhausted body and restless heart desired. Also, his bustling head needed an escape from the bugging thoughts. Rubbing his wet hair with a towel, Jim stepped outside the bathroom feeling a little refreshed, though tranquility was nowhere near him. He was about to throw the now wet towel on the couch carelessly, but his hand stopped midway when his eyes fell on you. What is wrong with me? Murmuring to himself, he stepped towards the balcony and hung the towel on the clothes drying stand. He climbed on the bed beside your sleeping frame and turned towards your side. Staring at your bed, he pondered over his next move. He hesitantly extended his hand in order to pull you in his arms, but his hand hung in the air as he grappled with his own thoughts. Was it right to invade in your personal space, especially when you were asleep? His subconsciousness gave him a negative reply. Thus, he read it in his hand back, just like every other night. Yes, he was a mafia, an unethical man who never cared about right and wrong. A heartless man was what the underworld entitled him. A merciless man who didn't think twice before unaliving someone, yet here he was, seeking refuge in his wife's presence. Blowing out a huge sigh, he turned on his back, staring at the patterned grey ceiling. The pesting thoughts clouded his mind all over again. Why did his wife stay away from him? His mind questioned, igniting a series of ifs, buts and maybes. Thousands of possibilities and none of them convinced him. Was it because he was a mafia? No, that couldn't be the case when you yourself came from an ex-mob boss family. Was it because of his dead expressions? Maybe, but he tried his best to be a man of expressions in front of you, but probably he failed to do so. Did you have someone else in your heart? The sole thought of it burned him from inside. If that was the case, the person would get killed by him brutally because, again, he was no saint. Definitely, he wouldn't let anyone snatch his wife from him. First, because she was his wife his only family, and second, he loathed defeat with every fiber of his body, and he wouldn't give up in front of any. Or was it because of his ruined image as a womanizer? These were the rumors he never cared about until then. The truth was, he never touched a woman because he wanted no attachments, neither physical nor emotional. And the list went on. The thoughts were never ending, that his brain got tired and lastly sought escape in the dreamland. Jimin sat down on the dining table to have his breakfast. His longing eyes roamed around, desperately looking for your sight. He usually wake up with you, sleeping beside him, until the time he returns back after exercising, you would have gone from there. Where is the lady of the house? He asked the maid who was serving him breakfast, though he knew where you would be at that time. Backyard master, the maid whispered. She was already sweating with fear. His cold voice and dangerous aura was capable of giving someone myocardial infarction. He stood up from his place, which made the maid step back in horror. He remained unbothered as he was used to people fearing him, but you were exception. He could never bear you fearing him. Instead, he would gladly let you dance over his head without no any complaints. But the fact was, what he didn't want, it was ex- exactly the same thing happening. His eyes roam around the heaven that the lady of the house created in his hell. The fresh morning breeze with a tint of aroma of different flowers and sand blew past his face. Amidst the greenery and vibrant flowers, 
he sought the sight of his very own flower and his eyes sparkled when he found her at the far end watering the plants enchanting an impeccable beauty absolutely a nymph in the heaven existing in his infernal realm that's what his heart screamed the moment he took in your appearance dressed in a yellow dress your hair tied in a low ponytail with few playful tresses teasing your cheeks and the adorable smile across your face made you look even more beautiful he didn't know he was smiling until he felt the extra stretch in his cheek muscles mr heartless was smiling that much your presence has affected him usually he would admire you from afar and then retire back to his burrow but today his steps involuntarily moved towards you as if he was under some spell of course a nymph had casted a magic spell on him when he was about a few feet away from you his phone went off breaking his trance and gaining your attention he glanced at you and cursed whoever ruined his precious moment he pulled out his phone and disconnected the call without looking at the caller id When he lifted his gaze, his blank eyes met your fearful ones. You were standing stiff on your spot, too scared to even breathe. Why? He was cut off when his phone rang again. He closed his eyes for a brief moment and again looked at you. As he took a step towards you, you ran past him and disappeared inside the mansion. He kept looking at you, reiterating back with no emotions in his eyes, but only he knew how much his heart was burning from inside. He cursed loudly when his phone rang for the third time. Looking at the screen, he found his secretary calling him. You better have a good reason if you don't want to die today. He growled on the phone. The poor man shivered in fear. Sir, there is an emergency. Your presence is needed. He hummed and disconnected the call. He stood where his car was parked but stopped and went on back hoping to see a glimpse of yours. However, when he got none, he retired to his car and drove away. Betrayal is what I hate the most. He pronounced, blowing a punch at every pause. The receiving person of the brutal punches screamed for mercy with every light or hard touch. The sad man was bleeding from everywhere due to the vicious beating he went through, dead to for hours, and Jemmel's harsh blows showed no mercy in breaking his jaw bones. Mick put him inside the human oven, set the temperature to the level which burns his skin but not kill him. He doesn't deserve an easy death after betraying me. He smiled rather sinisterly when he noticed horror in that man's eyes. The empty warehouse echoed with the man's pleadings and painful screams as the guards took him inside the room which was labeled as human oven. Jimin extended his hand towards his assistant who put his and a lighter in his hands. Putting the small toxic stick between his lips, he lightened it and took a big puff. The nicotine sent a burning sensation to, to his chest, which felt pleasurable to his wicked mind. Pulling out the cigarette, he blew the smoke in air. Taking two continuous puffs, he threw the burning stick on the ground and crushed it under his black Chelsea boot. Wet the car ready. His imperious voice echoed through the warehouse. His henchman instantly moved. at his exigent command entering inside the bedroom he was welcomed by the sight of you reading a book sensing someone's presence he looked up and your eyes locked with his you froze on your spot usually he returned when the sky became pitch black thus seeing him at early hours of the day surprised you swallowed in nervousness and got up from your spot in an attempt to run away from him But as you tried to walk past him, he held your arm. Your body stiffened, your eyes enlarged in shock. The skin beneath his touch burned, though your dress material hindered the skin-to-skin contact. He turned his body to face you. Where are you going? His cold voice sent chills down your spine. You gulped in fear and downcasted your eyes. Outside. Treat my bruise. What you wish to request came out as a... an unadulterated demand his jaw ticked when he saw you flinching under his hold you didn't say anything and quietly headed to the bathroom to bring the first aid box he sat on the edge of the bed and glanced at his wooden knuckles 
those injuries didn't affect him in fact it was an excuse to keep you close even it meant for few minutes emerging out of the bathroom you took a seat beside him maintaining a good distance all this while your eyes were down at the ground you hesitantly extended your hand towards him he looked between your face and outstretched hand and placed his palm on it you gulped and applied the ointment on his bruised knuckles all of the sudden you flinched when his fingers stuck to your hair tresses behind your ear licking rapidly you slowly you lifted your gaze at his face he gave you a small smile which wasn't a smile rather a slight twitch of lips cup your cheek his thumb stroking your cheekbone the warmth his palm radiated felt soothing yet blazing at the same time do i spare you sweetheart he whispered and you nodded captivated by his dark brown orbs don't be scared of me his voice came out as a soft whisper he leaned towards your face prompting you to close your eyes his lips hovered over your forehead a whisper away to touch his hand descended down to your nape and slid towards your shoulder in a playfully slow pace you stomach churned with anticipation this was the first time you felt him so close and it felt right your breathing turned shallow your palms turned sweaty and you clutched your dress between your sweaty palms his lips were about to touch your forehead and his hand slid towards your shoulder as his palm touched your shoulder joint your eyes shot open and you forced him with all your might he fell back on the mattress and blinked his eyes in disbelief he looked at you only to find thick tears rolling down your eyes he reached out for your hand but before he could do so you jolted up and rushed towards the bathroom and locked it from inside his jaw clenched as he felt a rush of anger crawling in his mouth anger at himself not on you he cursed himself for making you uncomfortable he sat upright and glided his fingers through his hair letting out a huge sigh he rubbed his temple rose from the bed and strolled towards the bathroom his palm hovered on the bathroom door to knock but he halted midway curling his palm he retreated his back and stormed out of the room banging the door behind lighting a cigarette he took a long puff and stared at the sky turning dark unlike other times the nicotine didn't calm his restlessness he threw it across the room and paced around the terrace the sight of your teary face didn't leave his mind instead it intensified his anger breathing heavily he lighted another cigarette and let the toxic substance engulf his senses Cursing loudly, he threw the half-burnt stick on the ground and stormed towards his home office. He sauntered towards a cabinet and took out a wine bottle from his expensive collection. Plopping on the couch, he poured the wine in a whiskey glass and curbed down the transcoolant liquid in one go. The fermented liquid burned his throat, but one glass was not enough to calm his rage. He threw the glass which collided with the wall and shattered into pieces. He gulped the wine directly from the bottle. Sip after sip, he emptied it whole. Throwing the now empty bottle aside, he reclined back on the couch and stared at the ceiling blankly. Within few moments, the alcohol took over his senses. He felt light-headed and over the moon. As he shut his eyes, your face flashed in front of him. Why am I? My sweetheart, murmuring to himself, he pushed himself off the couch and fell back, not being able to balance himself. Bloody couch. He threw a series of curses on the couch and again tried to stand on his feet, stumbling on his steps, knocking over every other thing that came in his way. He headed towards his bedroom. As the sight of your sleeping frame came in the line of his hazy vision, he smiled to himself. Wobbling towards your side, he fell on his knees and stared at your peaceful expressions. So beautiful. He chuckled and traced his fingers from your forehead to your lips, not actually touching it, as if he was feeling you without actually feeling you. You are mine, and no one can snatch you away from me. His teeth clenched together just by the thought of it. placed his head on the mattress his gaze didn't falter from your face 
However, his elbow collided with the alarm clock placed on the nightstand and it crashed on the floor. The loud sound it made pulled you back from your dreamland. Reaching your eyebrows, you slowly open your eyes and Jaman's face came in your line of vision. The strong smell of alcohol hit your nostrils, nauseating your senses. You jolted up from your place. Don't, don't be scared, please. The please word sounded foreign to him. He never spelled it, but again, you were bringing out a new side of him without actually doing anything. He reached out for your hands, but you slid back, avoiding his touch. A pained expression marred his face, and he looked at you with sad eyes. I am not a bad man, at least not for you. He murmured groggily and climbed on the bed, ensuring you to slide back at the other, other end of the bed. A sheen of fresh tears covered your eyes when he sat beside you. Hey, don't cry. It, it hurts me here. He pointed at his hurt. Warm tears rolled down your cheeks and you squirmed away from him. As he raised his hand to wipe your tears, you yanked his hand away and slapped him hard. His face turned another side with the force. Stay away from me. You yelled in frustration, but the color from your face drained away when reality hit you like a bullet train. You stammered and tried to touch his cheek, but he gently pushed your hands and lay down on the bed facing away from you. You stared at his back with glossy eyes, bringing your knees closer to your chest. You curled yourself in a bar and cried silently. Jemma slept with him due to the effect of alcohol, but sleep was nowhere near in your eyes. Jimin groaned and slowly opened his eyes. He winced and held his head, which was throbbing with pain. My head, he sat upright and blinked his eyes, trying to gulp down the extreme pain. When suddenly his eyes fell on you, who was still sitting in the same position. His eyes visibly enlarged when he took in your sight. Why? He whispered. His hand reached out to touch your shoulder, but he held himself back as he recalled how you reacted last evening. Why are you okay? You spoke a little louder this time. You slowly lifted your face and looked at him. His heart glanced witnessing your agitated state. Stains of tears on your cheeks, tired and swollen eyes, your miserable state pricked his heart in the most painful way. The first thing that came in his mind was, did he do something? He forced his brain to remember what sin he committed that led him there, but all he could remember was chugging down a whole bottle of alcohol, nothing after that. Uh, I did I do something? He short acted when fresh tears streamed down your cheeks. Never. Someone's cries never affected him, but the way your tears pierced his heart, he knew you had become his addiction. A perilous drug which held the power to weaken his knees, yet he wanted to consume it over and over again. You didn't reply and kept looking at him with your teary gaze. The silence confirmed his doubts that he was the reason behind your tears. He opened the bedside drawer and pulled out his gun. You froze on your spot when you kept the gun in your palms. Shoot me if I had hurted you in any way. Wrapped your fingers around the metallic gun and pointed it at his forehead. Your whole body shivered when the tip of the gun touched the center of his head. You wrenched your hands out of his grip and threw the gun across the room. Are you crazy? You yelled on his face. He remained unfazed, staring at your teary eyes. Why are you so hell-bent on getting slapped by me? You gritted out with frustration, your tears flowing non-stop. Slap? A faint memory of you slapping him flashed before his eyes. A frown edged across his face. But I hurted you. He trailed over when a pained expression crossed your face. You, you didn't hurt me directly, but you triggered the worst memory of my life. Your fingers trembled just by the mention of it. When you touched me here, he pointed at your shoulder joint and got the huge lump that formed in your throat. Or when you came drunk last night, it reminded me of him. Your voice dropped octaves lower at the end. You hesitantly shifted towards him, clasped your hand in his. Luckily, this time you didn't push him away. 
हू स्वीट हर्ट डिड सम वन हर्ट यू ही हेमसल वॉज सरप्राइज दैट ही कुड बी सो जेंटल बट अकेन इट वॉज फॉर इज वाइफ He touched me, Jaman. His own name never felt so beautiful until it slipped off your tongue. It was up for him to think about it as a serious moment, but he couldn't help it. When he sobered up with the pleasure of hearing his name from your mouth and grasped the reality, anger fell inside him. If it was a notorious boss listening, he would have only asked for the name of that wicked, nothing else. But it was his wife crying in agony. so he did something never will you share it with me he gave a light assuring squeeze to your hands looked up contemplating the idea of narrating the worst scenario of your life you were studying in your bedroom when the door clicked open he looked up and a smile made its way to your lips when you saw demian your personal bodyguard there you were 15 and he was 40 almost of your father's age you shared a good bond with him Uncle, you need something. You smiled, but it faltered when you felt his heated gaze raking all over your body. You felt uncomfortable under his gaze. You stumbled inside the room and locked the door from inside. You rose from your study table. By the way, he was wobbling on his steps. It was clear he was drunk. Uncle, go out. I I need to study. You shuddered. You didn't get good vibes from him. Additionally, your parents went out to attend a business party. There were only some maids and guards. You gulped and stared back when he advanced towards you. Finally, I got the opportunity to have you all by myself. Fear coursed through your veins. You gulped and tried to run past him, but he grabbed your arm and threw you on the bed like a rag doll. You called for help, muffled against his palm, and he hovered over you and pressed his palm on your mouth. Tears rolled down from the corner of your eyes, soaking the mattress beneath. You thrashed your limbs, struggling under his hold, but obviously he was way more stronger and perfectly trained. You thumped his one leg on your knees, restraining your movements. Your weak blows did no harm to him. You shut your eyes when he tore off the dress you were wearing, leaving you in your undergarments. You felt exposed and disgusted when he raked his lusty gaze down to your half-naked body. You were crying for mercy and screaming for help, but his palm against your mouth didn't let it out. He buried his face in the crook of your neck, and you felt him sniffing your fragrance like a predator. You pulled his hair with all your might and regretted your action next second when his blazing eyes met your pleading ones. Wrong move. The next moment, you felt a sharp pain shooting through your whole body when he bit on your shoulder joint. His teeth dug inside your flesh, drawing out blood. You saw when his other hand moved from your neck to your breast, fondling them painfully hard down to your lower abdomen and touched your genitals. Your body burned like it was set on fire. Your hands flew to the nightstand and got a hold on the waist. You grabbed the ceramic waist tightly and hit. on his head with all your might he groaned in pain and removed his hand from your mouth you gathered your strength and pushed him off your body jolting up from your place you wrapped a comforter around your body and screamed as loud as you could within seconds there was banging on the door you rushed over the door though your knees gave up but the adrenaline inside your body kept you sane Unlocking the door, you saw all the maids and guards at the doorstep. Your eyes met the head maid Sara, and you threw yourself in her arms. What happened? Why didn't you? Her voice trailed off as she adjusted the comforter over your body and tightened her grip around your trembling body. Aunt, he, you cried out, pointing at Daniel, who was lying unconscious on the floor. He, he touched me. As you uttered those words, the guard wasted no time in striding inside. They hauled his unconscious body out of your room. One of the maids called your parents. Sara escorted you inside. Jamal's hand balled into fist. He tried his best to compose himself. What happened to that? I don't know. Father said he would take care of him, but after that day, I never saw him. Jamal nodded. He knew how dangerous his mentor or father-in-law was. He was sure that Daniel wouldn't have gone through an easy death. But the scar he left on my body and my soul, 
I can never forget it. He, he tainted my soul so dirty that even after washing it up ten times, I can't remove the dirt. You saw and lowered your eyes. Can I see the scar? You snapped your head towards him, thinking he was making fun of your trauma. But the expression on his face was serious. It is dirty. Let me decide that. Your shoulders slumped down and you straightened your legs. When you had decided to open your heart for him, you let him see it all, from the worst memory to the scars that left behind. He slowly slid down your right sleeve off your shoulder inch by inch until it revealed the scar, though it was faded, but it was still there. He looked at your face. Your eyes were closed with tears cascading down like a waterfall. Your chest was heaving up and down with every breath you took. You flinched when you felt his cold lips on the scar. He let his lips linger there for a few moments before he straightened up. He leaned towards your face and placed a chaste kiss on your forehead. Does it still feel dirty? You opened your eyes and looked at him. Only if I can, I would have pulled him out of his graveyard and killed him again. But I believe father-in-law did a better job. I am not the one to sugarcoat my words, but I promise my lady, I would never hurt you, let anyone hurt you. Every trouble has to face me before going to you. And if I hurt you, even unintentionally, shoot me the exact moment. You threw yourself in his arms and buried your face against his chest. You are scary, you mumbled, rubbing your tears on his shirt. And you're saying it like this, nestle in my embrace. Tighten his grip around you and stroke your head lovingly and protectively. Take that out too. I want every alcoholic beverage out of the house. You instructed the guards who dumped his expensive wine collection in curtain box. As they vanished every trace of alcohol from his office room, he pulled off the cigarette packet from his pocket and dumped it in the trash can. My lady doesn't like it. From the sidelong glance, he noticed you standing at the threshold of his office, looking at the cars, taking out the huge boxes. Come here, sweetheart. Looked at him, looking at you with a smile and made your way inside. What is there in the boxes? Trash. This much? I mean, in these big boxes, you got more curious. Yeah, I did a deep cleaning after years. I feel refreshed. He uttered and extended his hand towards you, an indirect way to ask for a hug. You smiled and gladly cocooned herself in his embrace. He pegged a top of your head. Do you want to go out? You lifted your head, placing your chin on his chest. Are you asking me out on a date? Well, if you want to consider it one, then it's a date. You smiled and placed a long kiss on your forehead. You are my untainted innocent beauty. And you? I? I am your unethical beast. A bad guy whose courtesy is only reserved for you. My compassion, my admiration, my respect and my love is only reserved for you. You are the lady of my house. I rule the world and you are the ruler, ruler of me. The love that knows no boundaries. You are the obsession of the beast, my beauty. He whispered to himself an oath concealed behind his words.